A year ago today, I stood before you and, with Zone's help, told you that I had received a call about my father's death. One year, it feels like it's been less time than that. I'm generally okay with it at this point. I'm actually not that depressed or anything like that. I'm being a little safe today, just in case, but, well, I thought the best way for me to honor my father and things like that was to, well, play one of the games that he liked to play. My father and I actually had very similar tastes in games, pretty much the major difference being that I tend to prefer more real-time-ish games compared to him. He prefers more MMO-ish games. He preferred... Sorry, I'm still dealing with the tense thing. I'm not very good with that. As a result, well, I'm not going to play any of the MMOs that he liked to play, mostly because they're MMOs and I don't have subscriptions to WoW or things like that. Instead, I have decided I'm going to play one of the games that he and I played quite a bit when I was young, uh, Beyond the Beyond. Beyond the Beyond? Hmm, one moment. Beyond the Beyond is a PlayStation 1 game. Uh, it was released in 1996 here in the U.S., uh, in Japan, it was released in 1995. It's one of, if not the first RPG for the PlayStation 1. And it's not a very good game. I will admit, I have a soft place in my heart for this game. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, looking at it objectively, it's a pretty terrible game, don't get me wrong. But, well, it is effectively a turn-based... RPG, standard console RPG, only Shining Force-ish. Um, by Shining Force-ish, I don't mean the p battle system or things like that. I mean the plot, the world, things like that. It's basically a Shining Force game with their serial numbers filed off. You replace Arun with uh, Vulcanon, you replace um, Akadeus with Xeon, and you basically have something similar to the plot of Shining Force 2. Um, Camelot are actually the makers of the game. They are what used to be Team Sonic, the people who made Shining Force 2. There's a reason why there's a lot of similarities between the game. And there are probably even more similarities between this and the game they're much more well-known for now, Golden Sun. Uh, Golden Sun 1 and 2 could easily be in the same world as Beyond the Beyond. There's a different form of magic, but, well, there's a lot of things that feel the same. So, Beyond the Beyond, well... It is technically a PlayStation 1 game. It's really more of an SNES level of game. You'll see when I get to that part. And I'll be playing it. I'm going to start a Let's Play today. I will include the first part of the Let's Play, probably just the tutorial dungeon in this video, and then I'm going to start making more of the Let's Plays later on. Uh, a few words to note. While I do own the real PS1 version, I mean, this is a real PS1 disc, um, I will not be playing this version. I'm going to be playing it on an emulator. Mostly, well, one, so I can record it easier. I can record using my um, TV tuner and inputting in my PS2, but that's just a pain. And two, I would like to be able to fast forward. This game is not easy. That's probably one of the reasons why I like it, is that it's actually a genuinely difficult RPG. Difficult in the I want to slam my face into the wall because I've been hit by yet another area of effect spell difficult, but still. Um, as a result, I may need to grind quite a bit, I may need to fast forward through a lot of boring parts, I may need to backtrack a bunch. As a result, I'm probably going to want a frame skip feature, and you don't usually get those on real consoles. So there you have it. Um, I miss you, Dad. I wish you were still alive. You'd love the way the world has worked and eh, turned out in the past year. You'd probably have taken a vacation to Colorado by now, or Washington. Probably Washington, I think you prefer that state. Bye! Hello everybody! Let's get this off to a nice start. Um, just let you know in case if you're watching this outside of my little introduction, I am playing Beyond the Beyond. The title's right up there. I'm playing on an emulator, so that means I'm using my PC and using a 360 controller just for the sheer hilarity. Okay, so this is my only PC controller. So, let's get this started. I'm also going to be playing through the hidden um, opening video. I'll explain why it's funny later. Do-do-do-do-do. 
align my head properly. There we go. There we go. Such a cheesy opening. The reason why this is hidden is because they cut it out of the game before they released it. Um, Sony had a requirement where all PS1 games had to have a 3D component. This was the 3D component, the opening video. Yeah, I, there might be two of them or one really long one, I can't remember which. By the way, the army of Bandor looks so tiny in this video. Nope, just one video. Our intrepid main character is to the right, looking very pudgy and Quest 64-like. Sir Kevins is the one that's on the left, by the way. So, as mentioned, this is a hidden video. I actually had to hold down up and triangle in order to even get to it. Which makes it hilarious, because this takes up over 90% of the CD. I am not joking. The rest of the game outside of the opening video is maybe 30 meg? 20 meg, maybe? I can check it later. It's really tiny. The opening video is something like 150 meg in size. The game itself is still really tiny overall, but... It's pretty obvious this could have easily fit on a, like, SNES card, or Genesis card, or something like that. And well, the graphics of the game definitely prove that they can fit. Oh man, such combat! Whoa, Finn can leap back really far. Kinda tempted to call him McWedka. Maybe I will call him McWedka. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a McWedka. Dun dun dun. Yes, flicker back and forth between faces! Ah! And everybody jumps, like, 50 feet up in the air. I don't know why. Yeah, the opening has absolutely nothing to do with the game, by the way. Although, that does explain what happened in the very beginning. You know, they describe that as well. So, in my mind, the music is actually one of the high points of the game. That and the difficulty. I'm sure you will be incredibly, incredibly bothered by the music after watching this for several hours. Ah yes, the trippy background. So the little baby dragon that you see there is Steiner. That is the main character's baby dragon. Yep, I think I'll go with McWedka. McWedka. No, needs an exclamation point. There we go. Now it's perfect. Yeah, the camera position's not the greatest, given that I need to look there for the um, actual play, and I need to look there for the camera. I guess I could play with the little mini view that I have from open broadcaster software, but that's just plain weird. I think Steiner. So, this is something that I've never been sure about. It sounds like the only person that can understand Steiner is the main character, who is now known as McWedka. Normal name is Finn. Except that certain times it sounds like other characters can understand him. I don't under... I... I've got nothing. The game is not known for its stellar plot, after all. Sorry, the McWedka with the exclamation point just nails it. See, it's the Shining Force tradition that everybody with a portrait is important. They are not all characters in this game. Um, in Shining Force, they were all in all caps. This game does not, in fact, do that, so don't need to worry about that. Annie, on the other hand, is a character. Annie is by far the strongest character in the game. There's 
it doesn't even come close for a second. That's because she's a healer that's stronger than the highest strength character in the game. Like I said, Shining Force game. I'm trying to be a little slow for the text because I can easily read this incredibly fast, so let me know if this is a little too slow or a little too fast. I'm kind of guessing. You don't want to go based off of my speed. The game actually can't write text fast enough. I will never forgive him! What was that about? Mikwetka! Dun dun dun! Also, I have 2xi running for a graphical um, filter. It allows you to have a little bit more smoothing rather than a bunch of blocky text and things like that, but at the same time, there's a little bit of a blur involved. So, let me know if you want me to get rid of the filter. I think this looks fine, but that's just me. Yeah, you know, he's perfectly fine, he's just unconscious. Sir Kevins, you're an asshole. Yes, nothing like sexism to start the entire thing. Uh, be right back. Hmm, there's my tablet. It's nice to have a nice set of headphones for this. By the way, Annie is, um, young. Very young. Almost all of the characters in this game are actually well below the average age for a console RPG. But not all of them. I have always wanted to tell you! I think your methods are extreme! Yeah, I... This sounds like a blind idiot translation. I don't think it actually is. I think the text was actually written this bad in Japanese. I don't know, I don't have the Japanese version. I will never forgive you! Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. Ah! Wha! Yeah, these aren't villains, by the way. None of these characters turn into villains during the game or anything like that. Just... Yeah, that's an evil laugh. I, I don't get it. And this game is obsessed over exclamation points. Oh, hey, look, time to loop the song. Yeah, Sir Kevin's is not a very good father, by the way. Not even close. Bandor! First name of a different country. Hint, Bandor is the enemy. For most of the game. Who spies? That's okay, Bandor only has like 12 troops according to that FMV, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, the game's also kind of obsessed with the head dipping and things like that. Hey look, another location name, Marion Castle. Hint, that's the country that we're in. Marion, that is, not the castle itself, but that, you, you get the idea. Ooh, there's a young prince. Hey look, there's somebody else called Samson, because that's not a reference to anything. Alright, so, we should actually get started on the game. Oh hey look, as a reward, I'll just show him around my place of work. 
because that's totally a reward. <sighs> so I'm probably only going to end up playing through the opening tutorial dungeon, and unlike most RPGs, the tutorial dungeon is probably the second most deadly dungeon out no, third. Okay, so let's be honest, there's a lot of deadly dungeons in Beyond the Beyond. Um, I'm actually probably going to do this in a slightly sneaky manner, using a um, few exploits in the game just to make it... I love this lead music. Um, probably use a few exploits to make sure that uh, the game doesn't end up really boring or anything like that, because otherwise you're going to see me grind for an extremely long time, probably have several dozen TPKs, it, it's not pretty. Not pretty. But the first exploit's not for a while anyway, and the first dungeon is pretty nasty. The main reason is that you can't grind before it. There's actually a decent chance I will die on the first dungeon. It's about a 20% chance, I'd say. I've played through this game about 5 times from start to finish, and about 12 or 13 times for the first part. Hee <laughs> hee. Please see him as soon as possible. Well, Steiner is pretty awesome. Believe me, Steiner is by far the best character of the game, other than maybe Annie. Of course, Steiner's not really playable, so there's that. Do I have control now? There, now I have control. Trying to remember all of the buttons for everything. Yeah, you barely get to move in the beginning. It's annoying. By the way, this game is obsessed with But Thou Must. There actually are a couple of situations where there is not a But Thou Must, and nobody realized it. Um, I'll actually end up showing you one of them during the earlier part of this game. Um, the two that I know of, one of them's toward the beginning and one of them's at the very end of the game. It's kind of interesting that the developers thought about you saying no. Remember a flask from the shelf. Anything in pink is a key word, like spirit water for instance. I want you to fill this flask with that water. See, the problem is that they highlight these keywords in pink in the beginning. They kind of stop doing it toward the middle of the game. Never mind the end. I think just key items are highlighted, but there's not too many of those. Dun dun dun! And the sexism continues. On the plus side, this game actually does treat the sexism as wrong. Usually. I don't know if it actually passes the Bechdel test, though. Mostly because people don't talk to each other at all. There's multiple members of the party that are women, but... Um... What? Two? Yeah, I think it's two. They don't really talk to each other because one of them's a hidden character. Oh hey look, she face faulted and tripped on her way out. <sighs> Just take this plot as an excuse plot, okay? Oh hey look, the baby dragon's allowed to help me, but you know. The my little adopted sister? Not so much. Of course my little adopted sister is ridiculously powerful. But you know, what do I know? I can move again, hooray. Let's go pick things up, like the sword. All right, there we go. It's triangle to search, because that makes sense. Antidote. Herb. Nothing. Empty, this is the storage chest. This is the only storage trunk in the game, by the way, so this is not that great of a thing. Um, let's 
see, were there any items in here? Yeah. Let's get herbs. I already have an antidote. It's probably not that big of a deal to get an antidote. Uh, let's see, were there any armor? Yes, a light shield, please. Weapons? No, okay. That should be good enough. Hey look, I'm automatically equipped with it. Get E-Flask. So, you notice how there's a um, inventory screen here and it looks like it can hold maybe about four more items? Yeah, you can hold four more items. Each character has their own inventory. There's no shared inventory in this game other than... No, actually there's no shared inventory in this game, period. And as a result, that means that you run out of space very easily. Alright, here's the key thing. Take the path to the right because the left one is very dangerous. Remember that. At the fork, go to the right. You know this is an RPG, so you're not going to the right. Ah, right. That was the other thing, is that there is no running in this game. At all. Aha, it's the traveling merchant Michael. Sure. Uh, do you have anything I care about? Not really, no. Yes, you get to know if you have one or not. Not how many you have. No. Oh, damn it. Getting used to the weird controls. Remember, this is the first PS1 RPG, so none of the controls make any sense compared to any other PS1 game. How can I, a servant of Arun, help you today? So if you have played any of the Shining Force games, you know that you save in churches. You could resurrect in churches, you can cure people in churches. This is a Shining Force game. Flat out. Yes. Yes, I wish to continue. So I will be randomly speeding up the game like I did right there. Oh sure, I'll talk to some people. No. I'm Mikwedka. Oh, by the way, we've had a war with Mandalore before. We almost lost the last one. But they can't possibly be bitter, right? I mean, nobody's ever bitter about losing wars and... There's never a war in the beginning of the game where your hometown gets destroyed or anything, right? Let's talk to a few more people. Ah. Darn it! Hey look, there's monsters in the Cave of Spirits. Hmm, but I will have the entire village's respect if I get some water. Um, okay. Fairy tales for kids! As I have to say, the music for this game is actually pretty strong, it's just very repetitive. There aren't too many tracks. The actual official soundtrack is only four songs long. But that's because they do a lot of melodies, and it's not a full soundtrack, it's an arrangement. Wait. Who's Sonya? Maybe that's Annie's mom. Alright. So here's the world map. The other thing that looks almost 3D-ish. Man, look at those graphics. And get used to this music, because it's the only Overland music in the game. Not joking. Pardon the slight repetition that you hear when I go between places. I think that's just EPSXE glitching. So, hey look, it's your first random battle. A small bat appears. So, this has some... So, you notice that I don't have HP. I have VP, LP, and MP. MP is exactly what it is in most RPGs, namely magic points. I don't start with any, so not that big of a deal. VP and LP are a really weird system.
So the way this works is that you take damage in VP rather than HP. Once your VP goes down to zero, you are, I can't remember the term now, stunned or exhausted or something like that. Um, you basically get knocked unconscious. However, you revive yourself out of LP. So as long as you have some LP, you will regain some HP, or VP, sorry, on your next turn. However, that means that you lose your turn. So, the battle system is obtruse, to put it mildly. Obtuse, that's the correct word. A small bat had an herb. McWedka takes the herb. By the way, that was not actually a random battle. That is a scripted battle. Because Annie was hiding. Haha, <laughs> I came anyway. Neener, neener, neener. Ah, uh, that's Annie. See, this is why I say that other people can listen to Steiner, except later on they mention things like nobody understands what Steiner's saying, but McWedka, I, I don't get it. I wonder if Steiner is a boy or a girl. I don't think they actually ever say. Hmm. No. Yes, again, I have no control over this whatsoever. I would have loved to have had Annie in my party, because this would make this dungeon actually doable. Where I go to concern the two of you. Her speech is totally not that of an 11 year old, which I think that's actually Annie's age. Strange. Two small bats. This is where things start going wrong. Namely, you notice that I don't have any healing abilities? Oh, so that cha-ching noise. I should probably address that. So what I'm actually doing on the controller is that I'm actually mashing these buttons constantly. This has what's called an active battle system, not what Final Fantasy has, as in it actually uses some of your controller inputs after you hit attack in order to do things. Same with defending. Whenever you hear a cha-ching, that means that you have succeeded at putting in some type of input. Funny thing, nobody's actually figured out what it takes in order to trigger them on a consistent basis. It generally ends up just being button mashing. For no reason. I should probably heal myself after this battle. There we go. That is McWedka's critical hit. Everybody else has a different looking one. Yes, jump around, because I am victorious. More jumping. And I am really hurt, so I am going to heal myself. Get ye herb. Use ye herb. So the other thing about um, VP and LP is that you only restore VP. There's absolutely nothing in the game that restores LP. At all. Not even the hidden resurrection spell at the end of the game. That doesn't even restore LP. It only restores VP, which means that you don't really end... I mean, if you end up in a lock where your LP drops to nothing, you're screwed. Forever. The only thing that will restore LP is sleep. So if you're in the middle of a dungeon, you're screwed. Sorry. Eventually, I'll probably stop button mashing out of boredom, and my fingers getting tired. Oops. There we go. So, there's also a different problem with this game, and I don't remember fully, but there's two small bat creatures in the game. They're identically named. There's absolutely no visual difference whatsoever, except one of them's about 20 levels higher than these. 
that's um, the game can actually occasionally glitch and throw the other small bat in this dungeon. I've seen it happen once, I think. Hey, look! My stats have increased slightly. Oh, I have a max MP increase. Unfortunately, when you level up, you don't actually... All it does is increase your max. It doesn't increase your current. So, for instance... Actually, it does increase my current. Huh. I'm mistaken. Do, 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 do. trying to speed up things a little bit. I wish I had a toggle for this. I won't. I'll figure something out to try to make a toggle later on, but not for this opening dungeon. Bum, bum, bum. Double bunny! So, tumble bunnies, if I remember correctly, have the lowest defense in the game. Um, I used them for... I used to use them for testing out new attacks to see how powerful they were, because nothing in the game actually tells you how powerful something is. You notice I'm doing consistent 4 damage, and I think other enemies I do 3 to 4. Mm, I'm gonna need to heal soon. Critical hit... I can do one more attack. There we go. Luckily, most things here drop herbs, because otherwise you'd be screwed. You have to use healing items. Remember what path we're not supposed to take? Guess what path Annie takes. Yep. Guess what path I need to go down. Yeah. So, let's see. The answer is both, obviously. So now I'm actually at regular normal random battles. Which, the random encounter rate for this game is actually very high. So you are going to see a lot, and I mean a lot, of random battles. Uh, that was a dead end. That's also a dead end. Make sure I don't miss any treasure chests. They have herbs. Herbs are kind of useful. So. All I need to do is use Ye Flask, and I've gotten Ye Spirit Water. And now I walk back to where Annie was. You could actually do this in the other order, but it requires even more backtracking. You'll see why in not that long. A lot more backtracking, actually. Small bat. I have leveled up again. I have learned fire level one! Holy crap, I know a fire spell. Unfortunately, it takes all of my MP, I think. Not even joking. So, I think this is the only dungeon in the game that does not have some type of puzzle mechanic in it. Every other dungeon in the game, all of them, have some either a maze or a sliding block puzzle or something along those lines. Oh, there's a treasure chest. That's bigger than I am. Three slimes. Kind of tempted to run, but eh. I've leveled up a little bit. There we go. I'm trying to make this under an hour. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to. I have a source of wisdom. These are one-use items that increase stats. Source of insert thing here, I mean. By the way, if you die... It's not game over. What happens is that you end up waking back up at the last church that you were at with half of your money. 
So it is a, it's the same as any Shining Force game, basically. It's a decent way of trying to level up, but you're not going to get any money. And if part of the problem is that you're poor, it just gets worse and worse and worse. There's a section of the game where your experience gain is not worth the leveling, or the, not worth the money loss, because you won't be able to afford any equipment. Ever. This game is not very nice to people, by the way. Right. Using D-pad, not analog stick. And we are fighting Small Bat. Hooray for frame skip. Wish I had a little bit more control over it, like if I was going to only 180 frames per second instead of thousands. Okay, that's the route I need to go. Eek! Yeah, I can just speed through this now. Oh no! Annie's being attacked by a tentacle monster. Yeah, they went there. Yes, we're going to bash the tentacle. Because that sounds like a useful idea. Yep, that's right. The great Finn is not very intelligent. He's leveled up, so his IQ is increased by like one. Not joking. I'll show you when we get through this part. Go Steiner! I I can no longer Bonk. Annie No So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think that we need to do in order to rescue her? Hint, I did this not that long ago. Oh, and while I'm here, um... Let's see... No, damn it. Keep forgetting. There we go. Status. So, notice his IQ. His IQ is 2. I know they mean intelligence, but seriously, a 2 IQ? Seriously? Yes, I get to use Ye Flask! I will use Ye Flask. And it causes the tentacle monster to puke up Annie. That's all it does. By the way, that's not normal. Annie is not a normal character. There's actually an in-game justification as to why Annie is the most powerful character in the game. She's not normal. I... I was... Eh? Ew, tentacle monster.
I'm scared. I can't walk alone. Take me with you, okay? Yeah, she doesn't need to be scared. She's more powerful than I am right now. Uh, or is that after she levels up? Well, let's see. She has more VP, less LP, and she has MP. Hmm. Yeah, her strength is low, but the only reason why it's low is that her equipment is crappy. She already has better defense than the main character. Give you a hint, the main character has the highest defense in the game other than Annie. Yeah, look at stats. Annie has 8 lower attack. Yeah, or sorry, it's her actual stats. She has 5 lower strength, 1 lower defense, 1 lower speed, 1 lower IQ. Yeah, she's as dumb as a box of rocks, apparently. And 3 lower luck. This sounds terrible until you realize that McWedka is 2 levels higher than Annie. I'm getting about plus 2 to stats per level. Yeah. There's a reason why I refer to Annie as Frontline Annie. Which, speaking of... There. Frontline Annie. Problem solved. Oh, and... Hey look! Annie doesn't know any spells, but she has MP. I wonder what that means. Let's find out. But first... I love how they all look at you when you decide where they go. Oh crap, she's still on automatic, isn't she? So, for some reason, this game is obsessed with auto battles. I don't know why. Where you're the only one that's controlling the character. Now, there actually is a point to have an auto battle, and that comes much later. Right now, there isn't. And no matter what, you still have to control the main character, so it's not like it really saves time. Yeah, I, I don't get it. It's confusing to me. So, what we need to do now... Let's go back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Ah. Monsters ambushed. Oh, hey, look! Annie's leveling up. Hey, look, her strength increased by two. There's actually a character later on in the game that you get who is a frontline melee character. As in, that's exactly what he does. He has no magic, no special abilities, nothing. He is stronger than. or he is less strong than Annie on defense. That's a bad way of phrasing it. Annie has a higher defense than he does. Annie is a frontline mage. Specifically, a frontline healer, which makes things awesome. McWedica's leveled up again! With lots of good stats. I believe the stat leveling works the same way it does in Training Force, namely, um, level 20 is a constant for what stats you get. So no matter what leveling route that you take or anything like that, all level 20 characters will have the same set of stats every game. Also, like Shining Force, you can go above level 20 and promote at level 20 to something else, getting some stats. I don't know how useful it is, to be honest. There we go. See, I used up all the spirit water on Annie, thus I have to go back. Now, what they don't ever do is explain why um, Annie drinking the spirit water changes her, but not anybody else. They sort of try to explain it, but not very well. Ah, uh, good. So it looks like I'm not going to end up wiping. I don't think I've ever died after picking up Annie in this dungeon. And I'm now high enough level where most things are under threat, so not a big deal. And 
This is generally the way Beyond the Beyond goes, only with far more puzzles and mazes and higher random encounter rates and... Oh, Annie leveled up again. Again, no magic. Hmm, strange. Last random battle in here. Probably. Hey, I got an herb! I think I have now picked up the same number of herbs as I used? Let's find out. Yes, that is correct. We should hurry back home. You're right. Mostly because we can't go anywhere else anyway. No, really. This world map section, which, by the way, day and night? Mm hmm? Yeah, there's only two points in the game where you see night. It's kind of bad. Um, you can't go anywhere else in here. There are, however, different battle musics. It's based off of your location, which is weird. I haven't quite figured out the rhyme or reason to it. It's various points in the game have different battle music, but that's based off of location, and occasionally you hear wrong random battle musics. I don't get it. And yeah, I'm not bothering to heal anymore because I'm almost at the end, or almost at the city. I wonder if something's happened in the city. Let's find out. You're right, we should return home as soon as possible. Hey look, McWedka gave the spirit water to Sir Galahad! Because that's not a reference to anything at all. And he's just trying to sidestep. Uh, yeah, no. Yes, Annie is spoiled for trying to do the same thing that Finn is doing. Sexism... Again, though, the game is not exactly portraying this as a positive, at least, but, well... Breathing heavily. Um... I'm pretty sure they mean exasperated sigh and not... <sighs> yeah, no. The hell was that? Hey, what if something happens to you? You know, we don't care about McWedka. What if you get sucked under by a Kraken or Oh, right. Forgot. Hey, look. More random noises. Hey look, they're not sound effect glitches. The game is trying to actually do a decent job at certain things. Just, well, we're not talking about the best plot in the world. There's gotta be something out there. No, actually I hear knocks, not screaming. shuddering together. Da, da, ma, mom. Oh, my lord. Apparently Sir Galahad is currently being played by a William Shatner. Just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> hey look, it's Percy, some guy who has not been mentioned whatsoever. Percy! Oh, by the way, Percy is Annie's brother. Annie's older brother, I should say. Um, this is where the party age average goes up by a substantial margin. Dad. Mom. So glad to see you. At last. Ugh. Okay, so maybe Percy's being played by William Shatner. I'm not sure which. So... The weird thing is that Percy and Finn, or McWedka, have the same class. So, as you know in Shining Force-style games, or 
you may not, because you may not have played them. The main character always starts as a swordsman and ends up as a hero. And that's exactly what McQuidka ends up, starting as a swordsman ends up as a hero. Percy is also a swordsman, though, and I don't... I think there's only one other Shining game where there's a second hero. They... Marion Castle! Stop, Percy, say no more! Clichés, up the wazoo! Yeah, he's alright, he's just walking sideways. No, really, that's exactly the way he's looking. No, I can't believe it! Remember the brother you once had! How more melodramatic can we get? That's how more melodramatic we can get. Oh, by the way, remember when I mentioned that Annie is not normal? Yeah. Yep, exorcist. Wait, she's... Necromancer? Sweet! Yeah, she's not actually a necromancer. Well, apparently Percy's currently having an orgasm. That's kind of creepy. It's been so long since I've actually read the text of this game to remember that it's kind of scary. It's probably been about ten years. Oh, hey, look. Percy's asleep. So, something I should mention is that in the story of this game, healers don't exist. At all. Healing spells are completely unheard of, basically. <laughs> Good old mom, finally going, what exactly happened? Um, well, Annie just starts spinning and passes out. So, Annie is a healer, an extremely strong healer. Um, much later in the game, you actually meet a second healer. It's the only other healer in the game, and she's considered legendary for the fact that she has healing abilities at all. She's substantially worse than Annie, which is ironic because she's a Master Monk, and anybody who's played Shining Force 2 knows that Master Monks are not substantially weaker healers, but, um, yeah. Annie is by far the strongest healer of the game. For anyone, not just, you know, random characters that join you, not just random NPCs. You eventually start fighting healers, and they're obnoxious as usual. They don't they stop kinda stop mentioning the fact that Annie is so rare at that point. I'll stop once I can actually get to a save point, which is not too much longer. Hooray! I will be under an hour. Yay. Now I think about it, that's why you sent me. No duh. And my right ear is kind of itching, so I'd like to actually finish this soon. Can't believe Annie had such a power within her. Yeah. Yep, swamp poison plus spirit water equals healer. Can we just start dunking all of the villagers now? That would be great. I I'll go first. I don't mind. Although, if I do remember right, McWedka actually does get a healing spell later on, but it's a really weak one. Dad! Stop gushing over me. So, McWedka is a silent protagonist, as per usual. Except that he's not actually a quiet character, so it's one of the older ones. Ah, uh, yes! I'd rather die than be called a coward! Ugh. So, I think Percy's supposed to be something like 18 or 17, so more standard RPG character age. Do, 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 do. 
for a man, there are times where he just has to act. Sexism. And Annie runs upstairs crying. Of course, the reason why she's crying is legitimate. I mean, McWedka basically is her brother, her younger brother. Um, they don't technically live at the same place or anything like Or technically grew up together. They don't have the same parents, but they're basically brother and sister. Or, well, let's be honest. This is a cliche game. Annie obviously has a curse on McWedka. Er, curse. Herp and her crush on McWedka. But they don't actually say anything about it, if I remember right. Yes, lots of nods. I still don't have control, by the way. Wait, Mikwedka! Yes! Please, we need a healer. Please, it's not possible to play this game without a healer. <laughs> Or to... Actually, I don't think I've really used much of Lorelei. It's unfortunate. I want to use my new power to help them. Yes. Mind you, she was already equipped like a mage, so I don't quite understand why... Yeah, I don't get it. This game is kind of confusing at certain times. Hey look, she picked up an item! It's called Freedom! Yay, Annie is in the party. I have a real party now. I have three characters. I can throw Annie in the back row if I want. Not that it's all that useful. Though I might as well. So, usually my party makeup ends up being where Annie ends up in the front row because I need two other people in the back row. The way this game is set up, you can only have five characters in a party. And of those five characters, three have to be in the front row, two have to be in the back row. So, if you end up with a mage-heavy party like I normally do, that means that you throw two mages in the back row, or ranged characters, or what have you. Yeah, I'm going back and heal and saving, thank you very much. Okay, everybody is fully healed. Percy has no MP. So, we have Mikwedka, the swordsman. Oh, that's right, Percy is a knight, not a swordsman, I forgot. Percy is worse than Mikwedka. Admittedly, he's three levels lower, so that's a good chunk of the reason why, but he's a lot worse than Mikwedka. Uses the same set of equipment, though, which is interesting. Annie is actually stronger than Percy? No, he, she isn't. Only because of equipment, though. Otherwise, it'd be plus two strength and plus one defense. However, Percy has an IQ of four. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this game is not very good at adjusting color. There we go. That's what I want. Anyway, time to save and exit. Yes. Save there. Yes. I do not miss the PS1 incredibly slow memory card saving times. So, I will stop here. Thank you for watching, Internet, and good night. Oh, and I will be continuing this um, probably every weekend for the next long time. I may end up continuing it further on today, but this is a good place to stop recording for now. Bye!